Well, I think the sky's the limit. I mean, he's going to be the highest rated running back that Ohio State has on its roster, at least coming out of high school, even if he doesn't have the uh, the experience that uh, guys like uh, Master Teague and uh, even Mayan Williams, Steel Chambers, and Marcus Crowley have all at least taken a few uh, handoffs. While Teague, you know, obviously was a mainstay for – uh, this season and, and all of last season as well, the backup to J.K. Dobbins. So uh, he's got some ground he's got to make up. But if Tony Alford wants to get the best guys with the highest ceiling on the field, uh, there's no reason why Travion Henderson and Evan Pryor wouldn't uh, get a, a strong look this spring. And, and obviously going into the fall, uh, we saw what it means to this offense to have a dynamic running back last year with J.K. Dobbins. And then obviously uh, with what Trey Sermon was able to do, breaking tackles and carrying people along with him against Northwestern and Clemson. I'm not sure Travion Henderson is that kind of a back, though. I've got him listed at uh, 5'11", 195, which would uh, – Trey Sermon, you know, eclipsed that when he was in the 10th grade in high school probably. So, uh, you know, I – again, I don't know how you go about – involving freshmen and how what they have to show uh, to earn playing time. Obviously, ball security is a big part of it. Pass blocking is a big part of it. Understanding your responsibility is a big part of it. So, um, yeah, I think he's got tremendous upside and uh, great appeal, no question, to get him out there and see what he can do. But, uh, again, I don't know if size could prove to be a limitation for him or if they will put him in positions and situations where that size is not as big of a detriment and they they work, uh, obviously, to find ways to utilize his speed. So uh, I'm interested to see what happens. I mean, number 24 overall prospect in the country and number one running back in the country, that kind of says it all with Travion Henderson. And then to also get – uh, Evan Pryor in this class, uh, number two, I think, all-purpose back in the country. So he's also regarded up there. I think he was a top 50 guy, on at least uh, the composite. So uh, two guys, or no, rather top 80, I think, uh, uh, nationally overall in the composite. So two national top 100 players, two potential difference makers, and two guys ranked probably a hundred spots higher than anybody else who's a running back on this roster, at least coming out of high school. So uh, the Buckeyes finally getting back in the blue chip running back business, uh, maybe first time since J.K. Dobbins. I'm not concerned one bit about Henderson's size at all. He is, he's a guy that just goes out there and makes like, you know, PlayStation looking type of moves. Uh, You sit there and you're like, "Eh, you know, I don't know if I like him between the tackles and he squirts right through. He's a guy you get to the outside. He just makes things happen. It'll be interesting to see, though, what the translation is maybe from a more rural Virginia setting into playing in the Big Ten. But, um, you know, I think he's somebody who's right right in in that mix. I think he is a he is a good change of pace from either a steel or either a Master Teague or a Mayan Williams. And and I'm not sleeping on Evan Pryor right out of uh, right out of the gate as well because he is that all-purpose back as Steve had mentioned. I had an opportunity to go down and see him outside of Charlotte go through some some receiver drills. Basically, he and a quarterback and a couple other players were out there just going through their own drills on their own, and they invited me to come out and see him. and And he's a talented pass catcher as well. I think you know. We're going, to, we're going to say Evan Pryor on the wheel route several times during his career. I promise you that. But when it comes to Henderson, I think he's somebody right there that he could, he could lead to an early departure for another back on this roster right now. And I'm not going to handicap who or anything because that's not fair to anybody and we don't have spring practice to go through. But Henderson is the real deal. Uh, he's not a guy you're going to put a lot more weight on. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to reshape his body a little bit, get him to become, you know, not that 17-year-old kid, but that 18-year-old young man or whatnot. He's going to – he'll take to Mick Marotti's, uh strength and conditioning program, but he's he's not a guy that's going to be, you know, playing at, at, at 215 or anything like that. Yeah, in terms of uh, prior, I think um, what Ryan Day said on signing day, he's, he's a guy that they can use in the run in the pass and, and can be used in multiple ways. 
I know uh, Henderson tweeted a couple of weeks ago that he was up to 210 now. So, you know, he, he's, he seems to be preparing for life in the Big Ten. But what I see him doing is, like, when you watch Master Teague run, it's, it's that first hole. And it's always – it's just he, he's going in that direction. That's where he's going. With Henderson, I see him being more the, the sermon guy who can – now I'm going to go to this cutback. That's where the, the hole is. And he's just – he's incredibly dynamic in terms – similar to what – J.K., go back and watch J.K.'s high school highlights. He was ridiculous. Same with Ezekiel Elliott, ridiculous. And then as Kevin is saying, like, well, how good is the, the the competition? And those are the same questions I had with those two. But there there are things they do where it doesn't matter what you know what, right. what competition they are because you just look at them and it's different. And he's elusive and he's fast. And I, I you know, he didn't play this year, so and neither did prior. So there is going to be that. They did not have a, a senior season. Uh, I, I know I've been adamant that I don't see him starting game one, and some people have taken issue with that because they point at J.K. Dobbins. But you know, Mike Weber was hurt, and that's why J.K. Dobbins started game one. J.K. Do- Dobbins may have been starting game twelve. I don't doubt that. But even as a, a sophomore, J.K. Dobbins still split carries with Mike Weber. So uh, I, I think he's good enough to start as a freshman and you give him the ball as a freshman. I think he's going to, you know, put on 15, 16, 1700 yards for you, but there, there is a pecking order that we'll see if he can get through and, and what that pecking order will be. I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of movement at the running back position for the Buckeyes this year. And I don't want to, as Kevin said, I don't want to start putting people in the portal right now or moving positions. Although I, I will say, I think steel chambers would probably best be served to move to defense at this point. Where would he play on defense? Linebacker. He was a talented yeah. linebacker in high school. He was a two-way player. Uh, a lot of schools were recruiting him at linebacker. One of the things that set Ohio State apart was recruiting him on offense. But I said even at that point that I figured his last day at Ohio State, he'd be playing defense. From what and, we and heard from really Ohio good. State fans, they would have wanted him to switch to defense last year. <laughs> well, and – when he's been in, like he's made positive yardage. It's, I, I just think there have been some fumbling issues, and right now the depth chart is going to be tough for for anybody. I think it's going to be tough for Master Teague to hold everybody off at this point too. So again, those names were Elliot and Dobbins. Hopefully, you've tracked those guys. Are they doing pretty? What are they? Well, the Elliot kid well didn't point. really only rest for like three hundred and sixty yards as a freshman. I, I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's about That's what he had this Google. year with the Cowboys, wasn't it, Kevin? About 360 yards? Well, yeah. It, it's what he did in the middle. It's, the, the peak's been pretty good, I think. Cowboys right, still I, I, I never heard of him. Really? Is that really? Is that true, Kevin? I don't think anybody calls him Elliot. I probably threw some people there. 